So in this video, we're going to start with simplifying roots. And as we can see here, there is a square root. And so by default, a square root always has a root of two technically on the outside. So we always start with usually like the number that's inside. So I have to take the square root of 12 and 12 is not a perfect root. So I'm gonna go ahead and decompose the 12 so I can um, simplify it down. So four times three gives me 12 and four is two times two. So that means this four has already been decomposed. It looks like I have a pair of two. So whenever you're taking a square root, you're looking for pairs. So that means this two can come out, but I have a leftover three here. So that goes back inside the root. So I'm gonna make a little square root over here and stick in the three that I have left over. So now that I'm done with the 12, I'm gonna to go to the X here. And so whenever we're taking a root with an exponent, we divide. So how many times does two go into three? It only goes in one time. So X to the first power, or in this case, we can just write X, right? So two only goes into three one time. So this exponent here for X is one, but that means there's still one left over because three minus two is one. So still there's an X left inside. So that goes back inside the root. Um, two divides into two one time, so y to the first power comes out. And there's no th nothing left over for this y, so there are no y's that go back inside the root, and this would be my final answer. So just as a um, debrief, uh, when you're taking a root, you're going to need to take the root of the number. If it's not a perfect root, then decompose it using a factor tree. And then for exponents, you always divide the exponent with the root and that's what comes out of the root anything that doesn't divide evenly the leftovers go back inside the root all right this one here is a cube root so if we're taking the cube root of negative 125 um, actually i think this one is a perfect uh, cube root since 125 25 times 5 gives you 125 and 25 you can decompose into fives um, so in this case, there are three fives here. So when you're doing a cube root, you're looking for triples. And so I've already decomposed it to 25, so I'm gonna ignore that, but I have a triplet of fives. So I know that a five comes out, but don't forget this was a negative 25 and this is a cube root. So anytime you have an odd root and it's a negative, that means a negative value comes out. In fact, if I made these all negative fives, it would make more sense. Negative five times negative five is positive 25. Positive 25 times negative 25 is negative 125. So this had to have been a negative five to make it, um, if you cubed it, you would get back to a negative 25. All right, um, so that one was a cube, perfect cube root. This is a to the 17th power. So how many times does three go into 17? And that's probably five times, since three times five gives you 15. So this is gonna be, a to the fifth power, since three goes into 17 five times, but then there would be two left over. So in this case, I have a cube root and a squared goes back in, since three times five is 15, added two gives you 17. Um, three goes into two, let's see, three goes into two, mm, it doesn't go into two, right? Um, that's not enough. So in this case, b squared goes back inside the root. So three doesn't divide into two, that's why the b squared is going back inside. Uh, this is c to the sixth power, so three divided into six can go in two times, so c squared comes out of the root. And there's nothing left over, so this is my final answer. Okay, so we're brushing up on our roots because we're getting into multi multiplying radicals. By the way, if I haven't mentioned it yet, radicals are another way of saying roots. But it's more of a generic term, right? You don't want to say square roots. You don't want to say cube root. What if we want to know about referring to any type of root? We call that a radical. Um, or you can just say root. But basically, the blank needs to be the same to multiply the inside. So there's a rule when you have... Uh, two roots, you can only multiply them if the roots are the same. They have to be the same, which means that you can only multiply these two if they're both a square root. And they just so happen both of these are square roots, so you can multiply. So what you do is you just multiply um, the inside with the inside. So in this case, I would get a square root, 8 times 3, 
is 24, and then you would try to simplify this. So remember, this is a square root, so you would try to decompose this to simplify. So we know that 8 times 3 gave you 24, so 8 can be decomposed into 2s. So I'll get rid of the 8. It looks like I have a pair of 2s that will come out of the root, so 2 comes out of the root. I have a leftover 2 and a 3. So since these are leftovers, they didn't make a pair, you multiply them and go back inside the root. So 2 times 3 gives me 6. 6 goes back inside the root, and this is my final answer. So this is a situation it does work. Square root times square root, just multiply the insides because they're both square roots. So if you had, let's say, a square root of 8 times maybe a cube root of 3, then you can't multiply these, okay? So in this case, you couldn't multiply them because they're not the same root. This is a square root and this is a cube root. You can't multiply them. So you just have to let them sit there because you couldn't do anything to combine them. So let's get into this statement here. Multiply the outside with the outside, inside with the inside. So what that's referring to is, let's say that they both happen to be the same root. Like in this case, they're both square roots then you can multiply them, but make sure you multiply the outside number, so the coefficient that's out in front, so let's say the 5 and the 3 are the, the coefficients, if you multiply them, you would get um, 15, right? And now you would multiply the inside with the inside, so 5 times 12 would give me the square root of 60. So that's what I mean, always multiply the outside with the outside, the coefficients with the coefficients, and then the inside with the inside, and that is what should be inside your root. From here, you can try to simplify, like 60 can be broken down as, it um, uh, looks like 6 and 10, and just as a reminder, this is a square root, so we're looking for pairs, and then 2 times 3 gives me, actually, I start to notice, let's do 3 times 2, it's the same, but the reason why I want to do that is because I notice 2 times 5 will give me 10, so I can group up these two. That forms a pair. So I'll get rid of the 6 and the 10 since I've already decomposed them. So 2 is a pair that comes out. Actually, before I write that out, remember, so 2 is going to come out. That means there's a 15 outside. So 2 times 15 makes it a 30. And then from there, we have a leftover um, let me grab my other pen. We have a leftover 3 and 5. So 3 times 5 gives me 15. So I have a square root of 15 left over. And that is my final answer because 15, I can't break that down to get any pairs out. All right, let's move on to the next one here. So again, um, when you're multiplying roots, they have to be the same root, so they both are square roots. And we can only multiply the coefficient or the outside numbers with outside numbers. So this is three. There's no number outside here unless you want to pretend there's a one there. Um, so in this case, three times one is just still a three. And then square root of 15 times square root of six. What is 15 times six? It is um, 90, I believe. Um, and I just did that with a calculator real quick. So that gives me um, 90. So I can decompose this. 90 can definitely decompose into something. 9 times 10. 9 is 3 times 3. And 10 is 5 times 2. So I've decomposed the 9 and 10. It looks like I have a pair of 3s that could come out. So this 3 will come out that has a 3 in front. So 3 times 3 is going to give me... 9, and then I have a leftover 5 and a leftover 2, so that goes back inside the root, so 5 times 2 is going to give me 10. And that is my final answer. Alright, so this one here, they're both under square roots. There's nothing outside that I need to worry about multiplying, but I can multiply the insides together, since there is a multiplication here showing me I need to multiply. So if I multiply these square roots here, I have 2 times 6, which is going to give me uh, 12. And then this x is to the first power, and I'm going to multiply by this x to the third power. And just as a quick reminder, anytime you're multiplying x's, um, if they have the same base, then you add the exponent. So 1 plus 3 is x to the fourth power. So from here, remember this is a square root, so I could try to decompose the 12 as, I don't know, 4 times 3. 4 goes 
down as 2 times 2, so I've decomposed the 4. It looks like I have a pair of 2's that could come out, so I'll write the 2 out, and I have a leftover 3 that will go back inside the root. So I'll make a little root here and put um, 3 back inside. So this is a square root, so I just transfer it over the square root. And now I'm going to see how many times 2 divides into 4. So remember, exponents, we always divide the exponent by the root. So 4 divided by 2 is 2, or 2 goes into 4 twice. So we have an x squared that comes out of the root, and there's nothing left over for x's. So this is my final answer. All right, um, next one here is just two roots, and you're just multiplying them. They're both square roots, so it is legal to multiply them. 5 times 10 gives me 50, and square roots, I'm going to see if I can decompose this. I know 25 times 2 gives me 50. I can decompose 25 into uh, two fives. So in this case, I could pair up these and make a 5. Um, and then looks like I have a leftover 2 that comes goes back inside the root, so square root of 2. And that looks like it's it. That's all I could do. All right, moving on to the next one here. This one's quite large, 343. Whew, okay, let's see what we can do with this. So they're both fourth roots, so I know I can multiply the inside. I just transfer over the fourth root. And I just need to figure out what's 7 times 343. So let me grab out my handy-dandy calculator here to the side. Um, let's see. We have... Oh, I just realized I'm not on Zoom, so I can't show you the calculator. My bad. I'll just go ahead and multiply them to the side here. So 7 times 343 is going to give me... 2401. And so from here, I have... A very large number. So what I could do is try to decompose this or I can try to use the calculator. So um, if you go to the calculator you can hit math option I think it's option four or five and you can take a root. If you don't have a calculator uh, what you can do is you can try to do this by hand. So we know that 7 times 343 gives you 2401. You can also try to divide, I have a feeling this is divisible by 7, so if you take 343 and divide it by 7, you get 49. So 7 times 49 gives you uh, 343, and we know that 49 is 7 times 7. Okay, so I've decomposed this, I've decomposed the 49. It looks like I do have a quadruplet of 7, so that means a 7 can come out of the root. There we go. And that's it. So this one here, if you did it by hand, you would have to make a factor tree. You could also use the calculator. It would have been a little bit easier. Okay, this one here looks like you both have square roots, so we could combine them. I'm going to multiply the 5 and the 3, and that's how I get 15. And then the square root here, 2 times 8 is 16. And x times x, both of these or x to the first power. So if I add the, the 1 with the 1, I get a 2. So this is x squared. So this is a square root. Um, I don't need to decompose 16 to know what the square root of 16 is. It's just 4. So um, 4 times 4 gives you 16. So in that case, 4 is going to be coming out of the root. 4 times 15, that is outside the root, is going to give me um, 60. And then the 2 divides to 2 one time, so x to the first power comes out. So it looks like I have 60x as my answer. All right, um, this one here gets a little bit interesting. You have cube roots, so you can multiply them. So I'm going to multiply the outsides together first, 3 and 2. Multiply to give me 6, and we got a large cube root here. So 36 times 6 is going to give me using my calculator, 216. This x is to the first power, so x times x squared is going to be x cubed if I add the exponent. Same thing with this y is to the first power, so if I multiply it by this y squared, it's going to give me y cubed. So if I take care of this here, I need to find the cube root of 
20, 216. So I know that 36 times 6 gives me 216 because that's how I made the two numbers in the first place. Um, so 36 is broken down to 6 times 6. And there you go. That's the triplet here. So it turns out the cube root of 216 is 6. 6 times 6 that comes out is 36. And then from here, I have to divide the exponent by the root. So 3 divided by 3 is 1, so x to the first power. And then 3 divided by 3 again for y is y to the first power. And so this here is my final answer. All right, moving on to i here. So this one is interesting because you have a radical that's outside or a root that's outside and you have a set of parentheses. So naturally, you're probably thinking we probably just need to go ahead and distribute this number that's outside. So if I just multiply these two together, I would just multiply the square roots. I would have a three that comes down and square roots two times five is ten. And then I would have to multiply this 3 square root of 2 with 7. So only the 3 and the 7 can multiply. Um, so Because they're just numbers, they're just coefficients. So 3 times 7 is 21. And the square root of 2 just pops to the side. Um, and then from here, I can't combine these two because they're not the same root. So one of the things about addition is you can only add the coefficients or combine them if the roots are the same with the same base inside. So this is a base of 10 and this is a 2. Also, I don't think I can decompose 10. 10 is 5 times 2, and so I can't even try to make this a base of 2. So this looks like my final answer. So I can't combine any further. This one here looks very similar. I'm just going to go ahead and distribute. So that'd be 5 times the square root of 3. 5 times negative square root of 3. Okay, so this gets interesting. There's a negative sign. Let's go ahead and drop that down. Square root times the square root, that's legal to do. So I'd multiply the insides together. 3 times 3 is 9. But the square root of 9 is just 3. So in this case, um, I can't combine a coefficient with a root. So this is my final answer. And that's it. So I want you to notice something here. When you took the square root of 3 and you multiplied it by the square root of 3, Notice how you just got back out a 3. Like, yes, we got a square root of 9, but that turned into a 3. It's almost like the root just canceled. And whatever was inside, if they were the same base, comes out. Just keep that in mind because that's a pattern that you'll start to see with uh, roots. Is that when you multiply two roots that are the same, at least for square roots, they're both square roots and you multiply them, um, turns out that the root cancels and you just get the base that's inside that comes out. But we'll see it again, and I just wanted to point it out early to you. So this next one here, I need to FOIL, because there's now two terms on each parenthesis. So I'm going to multiply the square root of 2 with 5 square root of 2. So watch, both of these have a 2 inside. Now, this is technically a 1 in front, so 1 times 5 is 5. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 4. Notice how if I take the square root of 4 it's going to give me a 2, which goes back to the base that was inside originally. Um, but we'll check that out once we're simplifying here. Let's move on to multiplying the square root of 2 with 6. So that would just end up being 6 times square root of 2. So if, they, if this one doesn't have a root, just put the 6 in front of the square root. So there it is. I'm going to multiply the negative 3 with the 5 square root of 2. So that would give me negative 15, 3 times 5 is 15, square root of 2. And last but not least, negative 3 times 6 is going to give me negative 18 as my final um, term here. Now, I can add the middle terms because both of these have a square root of 2, which is good. So that means I can combine the coefficients that is in front. But before I do, let's start with the first piece here. So, so the square root of 4 is 2. So I'm going to have to multiply this 5 by 2. And I have a 6 minus 15, so that makes it, let's see, 6 minus 15 is going to give me negative 9 square root of 2 minus 18. So the 5 times 2 gives me 10.
and I can multiply at least the 10 with the 18. So 10 minus 18 gives me negative nine. So I'm gonna bring down the negative nine root two and then have a negative nine next to it. So I've combined these two to get a negative nine and I just brought down the negative square root of two. Um, by the way, it doesn't matter the order, which one came first, as long as you have the signs correct. And that's it. So um, something to think about is if you have two terms, you gotta foil it out. Um, also, just if you started to notice a pattern, anytime you multiply a square root with another square root that has the same base inside, turns out they just cancel. And so having the number that's inside just comes out. So a lot of people just skip this part and just cancel out the root and keep the number that's outside, or sorry, the, the number that's inside. All right, let's try that trick with this one here since we've already started to notice a pattern. Um, so in this case, we have a two square root of five times three square root of three. So two times three is gonna give me six. Five times three is 15. And then I need to multiply the next one. Two times four is eight, but notice how they're both a square root of five. In that case, the roots are gonna cancel out and give me just a five. Now, if you're not comfortable with this, just go ahead and multiply this out and you'll get a square root of 25. But what is the square root of 25? It's five. So that's why I already have a five here because I know the roots are gonna cancel out. Also ask yourself the question, why do they always cancel out when it's a square root and the same bases are inside? Maybe something to think about. Because mathematics, it's not magical. There is a reason why that always works. Okay, now I'm going to move on to distributing the 4. 4 times 3 is 12 square root of 3. And 4 times 4 square root of 5, let's see, 4 times 4 is 16. And there's a square root of 5 that's attached to it. So let's see if we can clean anything up here. Now I can tell you right now, 15 doesn't decompose into much, at least for a square root. 15 is 5 times 3. There are no pairs that will come out. So I'm not even going to bother to decompose these. And 3 and 5 are both prime numbers, so I can't decompose those. So I think the only thing I could do here is bring the stuff down and multiply the 5 and the, the 8 together to get 40. And I don't think anything else would combine because all the roots are different. So you can't... So they're all square roots, but they all have a different base inside, so you can't add them together. So unfortunately, this is all I can do. All right, that is it for this video. So if you have any questions, let your teachers know. Um, but that is it. In the next video, we'll talk about division.